There are so many reasons to live here in Duluth, Minnesota, but today we're going to talk about the things you really need to consider if you're looking to make the move here. So stay tuned, you don't want to miss anything. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Cody Oakland, a real estate agent here in Duluth, Minnesota. If you're new here and interested in all things Duluth, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you guys could do me a huge favor, smash the like button on this video. I would really appreciate it. And I'm getting a ton of questions every day about Duluth. So if you're looking to buy or sell a home here, reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below. I'd love to help you. Now let's talk a little bit more about the things you need to watch out for if you're looking to make the move here. All right, so we have a number of really important items to go over today. The most asked about one, uh, we're gonna go over later in this video, so you're definitely gonna wanna stick around for that. But we have a variety of information to go over and we're gonna start today talking about the seasons and weather we have here because it's really important and it comes up all the time for everybody. And so we're gonna start talking about kind of springtime real quick uh, and kind of go through all of them, including winter, that uh, I probably get the most uh, questions about for as far as like weather-wise here. Uh, but springtime, the thing to keep in mind is, you know, things are gonna start more as you get in later April into, into May as spring kind of goes around here. The temperature is going to start to warm up a bit you don't really have the the same kind of bugs like you do in the summertime right because it's not warm enough or anything and your grass is going to slowly start to grow in so you're going to have to prepare for uh, mowing season coming up uh, in late spring but uh, the main thing is as winter comes to an end uh, and the snow starts to melt we're going to start to get more rain and that's where you really start to see a lot more mud around here and it's not a huge deal but if you like to do anything outside just prepare you know whether you're going on for hikes or anything uh, prepare for some muddier areas and it can also mean some stuff you have to keep an eye out for your property because as uh, the puddles around your house with the snow melting and the rain start forming around the house if it doesn't drain properly around it uh, you just want to make sure the water's steering away especially from like the basement areas because sometimes uh, if if there's uh, like a crack or something and you let water really build up around it, it that might be where you start to get some water issues uh, if there's not proper water uh, drainage around the house so definitely keep that in mind in spring but as we get into summertime, that's a really big deal around here. You know, the temperatures are going to start to warm up finally uh, for summertime. Things are growing in on the, the trees, the grass is growing in, and everyone's out uh, around uh, the area on the lakes and everything. But you are going to get more bugs, so that's going to be just part of it. You're going to have to mow your lawn. But every summer is going to be just a little different because we do have some drier summers than others, so maybe you won't end up mowing as often. Um, but that is going to be part of uh, your routine depending on what type of property you buy so maybe you end up with a condo or a townhome where you don't have to mow uh, or somebody's doing it for you around the area uh, obviously you can pay somebody to do it but depending on your yard size that's always something to keep in mind when you're searching for property as well if you're in the city you're probably going to have a smaller uh, size city lot uh, and yard space so you don't have to worry as much nearly as much as if you have a, a bigger like country property where maybe you're mowing a couple of acres or even an acre of lawn so you don't need as big of a mower or you're not going to use as much of your time you know every week or every couple of weeks mowing and so that's that's really a big piece of living here in summertime you know there's going to be more uh, tourism here as well because it's going to be nicer a lot of people are visiting to check out Lake Superior uh, and the area itself uh, for what we have here, we have a lot more events going on, so a lot more people are visiting for that as well, uh, which, which is really cool, um, but it is going to be part of living here. Um, and as we get into kind of fall season, uh, it's going to mean a number of things. So right now we're kind of towards heading towards the end of fall a little bit here uh, because snow is going to start to stick around uh, more in the oncoming weeks. But as you can see uh, here, we've got a lot of the leaves are falling now, um, which can mean a number of things. So as you get into later fall, you're going to have to start to worry about more yard cleanup for the leaves as well. So just like mowing the grass, uh, the bigger the yard, uh, if you have a lot of trees in the yard, uh, like I do, <laughs> that can mean a lot more leaf cleanup. But maybe your yard isn't, uh, you know, populated by a ton of trees in the middle of it. So 
maybe they're just more on the edges so you just have to do a little bit of cleanup around that um, so that's gonna also vary property to property but it is a really cool time of year you know you get less and less bugs as you get into fall time but the leaves will change color and it looks awesome here I love to go up uh, the North Shore scenic route just for a short drive and really just enjoy uh, being by Lake Superior and seeing all the colors over there as well and it doesn't take long uh, to get over there but uh, winter is the big one and winter is really like I was saying it's gonna kind of start where the snow is gonna stick around more in like mid-November and you're gonna start to see lower consistent temperatures then too um, Although it will snow before then, <laughs> like it, it's already snowed a couple times real quick, but it melts right away um, the earlier it happens. But you do want to prepare uh, because winter technically starts at the end of December, but you're really going to start to see more winter-like climate in mid-November. So just be prepared for that. And it, the amount of snow, we do get more snow here because of our proximity to Lake Superior. So it's, it's very common to get, you know, when it's going to snow, you know, three to six inches. And it, it's not a big deal because at that point you're already out there snow blowing. So it's just a little bit more snow. You can certainly get more than that <laughs> in one go or in a short time. We've gotten some big snowstorms here. Um, so just be prepared for uh, snow removal uh, and it's going to be pretty consistent. So that's, that's one part, especially if you're new to having snow or winter in general and you're coming from a warmer climate, uh, that can be a really big deal for everybody. So you might not just need a shovel, you might need a snowblower. Even if it's a smaller snowblower, that can be a big deal. Um, and the cold uh, might be new for you as well. Uh, so we do get, and this is for everywhere in Minnesota, colder temps, you know, so you're gonna see below zero. I mean, you can see 40 below and January and February tend to be your colder months here. So just keep that in mind as you're looking uh, at living here. You know, feel free to go online, check the historical temperatures and average snowfalls. Every year's a little different um, as far as, you know, how many cold days we get, uh, how much snow we get. The, you're gonna see the averages, but every year's a little different. Same for like summertime, like we were talking. You kind of just gotta roll with the punches here a little bit. Um, and because of the seasons and the variety of weather we get here, you're gonna have to prepare for different clo clothing purchases. Maybe you want a different vehicle. You don't necessarily need something huge to drive around here. Plenty of people drive around with cars. Um, it really helps to have some good tires. Even uh, some snow tires can make a big difference. Anything bigger you get, or if you have all wheel drive, four wheel drive, that all helps. Um, it's not required by any means. I drove a small car for years growing up um, and you can get different weather in the same day even <laughs> which you, you're always going to hear stories about here so just be prepared for that you, you might need like I said new clothes more clothes uh, you might need you might not be used to mowing the lawn all the time uh, all the yard maintenance depending on what type of property you purchase snow removal so that's all common and the other part to the weather here is going to be the Lake Superior Lake effect and that's like I said one reason we get more snow here but it does a couple interesting things as well is it makes it really hard for the weather people to predict the weather here uh, you know um, so if they're predicting rain and they might predict be predicting a rainstorm but you might not even know until that day or within a couple hours because with the Lake Superior Lake effect, it, it could prevent the rain from even happening, even though it's looking like it should rain. Same for snowfall. You know, different parts of town might get different, slightly different amounts of snow. Um, you might see it melt a lot quicker by the lake as you get closer to it in certain neighborhoods. Uh, but it is one of the reasons we also get uh, it preventing a lot of like tornado action. It makes the news even if we get a funnel here. So it's not uh, to say it can't happen, but it's very rare for us to get tornado-like action. Um, but that is something to keep in mind, and that comes up a lot for like the seasonality and the type of weather we get here. All right, the, the next item we need to go over that's gonna be really important, especially if you're coming from an area that is bigger than Duluth, this is gonna be a really important item for you to kind of just keep in the back of your mind as you're planning your move here. Um, and you can always check online or call me anytime if you want to just see what's here for some of this stuff um, is 
the things to do here, options for retail. We actually have quite a bit here in the Duluth area for the city this size. But um, if you're coming from a bigger area, you're gonna be probably used to having a lot more available and maybe a different quality for certain things. Um, but as far as like things to do, you know, we have a ton here for outdoor activities. You know, there's, we're in Northern Minnesota, there's tons of trails, whether it's for hi hiking, mountain biking, you know, we've got Spirit Mountain locally here for a lot of different activities, especially, you know, for snowboarding, skiing, sledding, different things for that. Um, and, you know, there's cross country ski trails, lakes, all kinds of stuff, even within an hour, um, and there are plenty more outside of the, you know, driving distance of an hour time frame as well. But there's a lot locally. We have, you know, over a hundred parks. But um, this comes up a lot is especially for like indoor activities. We do have a fair amount you can do indoor for a city this size, but it really depends on what you enjoy doing. We have a fairly good uh, size art scene here. There's tons of indoor, like uh, whether you're looking to join a bowling league, you know, we certainly have multiple <laughs> fitness centers. Um, we have the Deck Convention Center, and that's where a lot of like the, the bigger events are gonna happen. You know, like we just had the comedian Tom Segura here, uh, Burt Kreischer's coming. There's a lot of music acts, some big shows like the Home and Builder Show. Uh, they've got the wedding show down there. The Amsoil Arena for hockey, so Bull Bulldog Hockey. Uh, the hockey team for the University of Minnesota Duluth is a big event here. It's really cool. Uh, if you've never been to a game before, that's a lot of fun. Um, so there's plenty to do, even in winter. Like we were talking, we've got Spirit Mountain for the skiers and snowboarders. Lots of different cross-country ski trails, snowshoeing, fat tire biking is getting really big here. And keeping busy in winter can be a, a really good thing. Um, but on the colder months, you're probably going to be indoors more. Um, versus outside so it's really good to find some indoor activities a lot of us will catch up on indoor projects as well in January and February not that you'll be stuck in the whole month but those are the colder months of the year so for retail though you know we've got a lot of the big box stores if you're just looking for Target Walmart Best Buy we've got a number of different grocery stores like Super One couple of Whole Foods, couple of Aldi's. Um, Super One is the main chain here though. We also have Cub Foods, Mount Royal grocery store. Um, and there's a main area as far as retail goes. The main area is going to be in the Miller Hill Mall spot. You know, we've got Best Buy, Fleet Farm, Menards, Home Depot. Um, a ton of small uh, boutique sh stores as well, whether it's for clothing, gift shops, all that stuff. Um, they just, uh, we've now got uh, an Ashley Furniture recently and the other big store before that um, was Costco. So we do have a Costco for anyone <laughs> looking to shop there. I Until we got one here, I had never been to a Costco and it's awesome. Um, so we go there all the time now. And so keep that in mind. But if you're looking to have nonstop activities and action here compared to a bigger city, we just don't have as many options. So sometimes, um, you know, if you're looking for a little more activity uh, and to get out of the area, even for like a day trip or a couple days, like for an extended weekend, you know, the Twin Cities is gonna be a couple, of, you know, depending on where you're going, two to three hours away, um, where, you know, they'll have a lot of the major events down there. So a lot of us will end up traveling uh, here and there for some of those. But just keep that in mind as you're looking to move to this area. Now, the third item on the list today is always a big topic here. And this comes up everywhere you're gonna live is construction. Now, if you're not used to living in a place with like a real winter that really affects uh, planning around uh, the seasons for, you know, when you can do certain construction and things like that, uh, this is gonna be totally, you know, new. So because we have winter, it really affects a number of things. The, the main one you're always gonna hear about are the roads here. And that's not just in Duluth, that's you know anywhere in Minnesota really uh, because of how winter will affect the roads. So you're gonna see potholes. Uh, and this isn't for every road by any means, but there's plenty of roads that are gonna be a little bumpier than more than some of them. Uh, some are gonna have more potholes, bigger potholes. It just depends. So it's really good. Um, 
that's another good reason to visit too is just to see you know what everything's like for that but um so they're always going to be doing ex road work in a place where there's winter like this uh anywhere in minnesota really but that's that's a big topic here um so you're going to see a lot of roadblocks um they've been doing some really good work on some different areas but you might be on you know detours uh so it might not affect you if you're working remotely um, but if you're you have an office job here that you're moving for or anything uh, similar you know that that's going to be a part of your summer um into you know fall here um, but they've been doing some great work it's really really good to see some of the work they've been doing lately um, there's a big freeway freeway project that's been a multi-year project that um, looks like they're doing some good work on still and it's all winter is also going to affect just your standard construction for a lot of different things outside as well because you know part of the year you know with the ground frozen and they also have road restrictions for bigger vehicles uh, for some of this stuff so you're not going to see everyone out in winter doing a lot of the outdoor work um, which is also the part of the reason a lot of stuff is happening in the non-winter months so you're going to see a lot more of that and they're a lot busier so it's hard to always have a contractor readily available so if you're coming from an area with a moderate climate maybe you have more access to contractors so you might be waiting um, for certain work here uh, that you might not be used to have to wait wait for um, so that's a really big deal here as well and being a smaller area there's not as many contractors as some of the bigger areas so keep that in mind uh, as you're looking around uh, for what you can plan on for construction wise here all right next on the list is something else that comes up uh, regularly and that is the layout of Duluth and the distance to different places and, and this might depend on it, where you're coming from uh, and what you're used to and Duluth uh, is gonna have an interesting layout because you're gonna have the Duluth Hill on you know a good chunk of Duluth uh, and it's by no means taken up the entire city like some people will th uh, have you believe in but uh, there's gonna be plenty of area above the hill uh, there's lots of homes on the hill too which is also the reason a, a fair amount of homes might actually have a some kind of view of Lake Superior even if it's a small one outside of a corner window and there's lots of area down below uh, towards Lake Superior on the bottom of the hill but uh, Duluth is kind of spread out um, and it's not necessarily built uh, like some of the other areas where you can just walk to get everywhere um, so I would say because our main retail area is going to be above the Duluth Hill kind of in the Miller Hill Mall zone that's uh, where a lot of it is going to be and then in some of the other neighborhoods you're going to see you know you've got some gas stations some small retail uh, maybe a grocery store even if it's a smaller grocery store so you don't always have to leave every zone to to get some stuff um, uh, and you know some different um, jobs are focused in other areas so if you're working at like say one of the hospitals you know a lot of the the main hospital area is going to be downtown Duluth uh, at the bottom of the hill area there so if you don't want to deal with the hill at all you know you might have to live towards the bottom of the hill somewhere and so it can all factor in so if you're looking to walk everywhere I think it's going to be really tough um, there's certainly it's certainly easier to bike more than it used to be but it's still a fairly spread out area so I think um, you're still gonna need to drive around for a good chunk of things but it is getting easier uh, in certain areas to get around uh, if you at least look into bike or walk around I mean we certainly have sidewalks in a lot of areas and a lot of parks and things like that but the area itself is like we were talking fairly spread out um, but it doesn't necessarily take long to get everywhere either I mean we don't have as many people as a bigger city so I mean typically I mean you're gonna be within five to ten minutes of quite a bit um, depending on if you live on the outskirts of town maybe you're, you're looking more at like 15 to 25 minutes to get around uh, to the far side of the the uh, area here so it doesn't necessarily take that long but uh, if you are just looking to walk around everywhere 
it's not necessarily built out that way. So, and, and you can see that on the map if you're on Google checking anything out. Um, and we can really plan that around what, what you need, what you need to get around to uh, when you're planning your move here. So that's another really good reason to visit or reach out so we can start having those talks early. But that's something else uh, I want everybody to keep in mind as you're planning your move here. All right, I'm really excited to go over this last item on the list with you guys today on the video. And it's something that comes up with everybody uh, that's looking to make a purchase here because we do have a lot of older homes in our area. And what I mean by older is kind of that 1900 to 1940 time range. And it doesn't mean we don't have newer homes than that or new construction, uh, but we do have a lot of homes that are gonna be older when you're looking online for homes that are uh, available for purchase. And that can be new for a lot of people. Uh, so it's really good to reach out and uh, we'll have that discussion and see what is gonna work for you and your family. Uh, when you're looking to make the move here, what price points you're looking at, what type of property layout and setup uh, you require, and that's gonna work. Because uh, I, I know not everybody uh, comes from an area where their, their homes uh, in that area are gonna have basements. So basements can be new and on older homes, you know, there's not really a standard basement. You kinda gotta get into them. You're not gonna see a lot of pictures of basements online because a lot of them aren't gonna be finished in those older homes. The ceiling height is probably gonna vary. They might just be for utility space and not necessarily for uh, livable space uh, where you're gonna hang out or anything other than maybe a workshop or something. And uh, you know, take a look at, closer look at the foundations and what to kinda expect there. So it, it's gonna be a, a top priority to really have these dis these discussions and decide what type of property you're looking for. Maybe you're looking for something way out in the country and not in the city of Duluth. You know, we can uh, talk about that as well. So it just kind of depends on what is gonna work for you. And uh, so reach out, let's have that talk and uh, we'll go over any questions you have. Well, there you go. There's some really important items you need to keep in mind if you're thinking about moving to Duluth, Minnesota. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button, leave a comment, share it with a friend, and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I post new videos about Duluth, Minnesota every week. And as always, if you're looking to buy or sell a home here in the Duluth area, reach out anytime at the phone number or email on the screen below. I'd love to help you.